program itself uh, was a two-part kind of tour and art workshop, um, which started at the Museum of Contemporary Art, um, connecting their exhibit at the time, which was called Forecast Form Art in the Caribbean Diaspora, 1990s to today. And in that exhibit, uh, there were some Haitian artists. And because we're a Haitian museum, um, it, it was a great, great connection for the students to go to the MCA um, do uh, a tour, do a little bit of an art workshop there, talking about identity, talking about home and place. And then traveling to the museum, traveling to the Haitian American Museum of Chicago to get a tour more specifically within the Haitian diaspora, um, finish that art project, and then be able to share out to their classmates that were there. I think definitely working with Carlos and getting to know the Haitian American Museum better. It was a museum that I had never been to. It was a collection that I was not familiar with. And it was really uh, good, I think, for my practice and professional development to be able to work with somebody else and really kind of uh, do a lot of creative problem solving about how we were going to be able to fit our two collections together in a way that was like meaningful, both for us and our, for our students. Um, I think first and foremost, it's that the students, you know, the CPS students were able to have an extended two-part immersive field trip at two different institutions. Um, not only are field trips, I think, important for students to kind of learn about where they are and what else is in Chicago, um, but to allow the opportunity through CIS um, for students to do it kind of twofold in one day. Um, I, I kind of thought back to my my field trip days and there was never anything really like that. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity. Um, and I think the second thing uh, about this collaboration that I really enjoyed was the connection that MCA and the museum made, kind of more in the broader museum sense, where we think about bigger institutions uh, helping smaller institutions, but then also in this instance, how can a smaller institution help a bigger institution? And I really feel that um, through the uh, specifically the educational lens, um, it was really important that we made this connection because it's more sustainable, I think, to to make connections through education, to make those um, connections that have those tangible outcomes specifically for students. The, the number one thing is making the initial connection. Um, I think we knew kind of who the partners were, but we didn't necessarily know how to how to connect or what that looked like. So, you know, it was really fabulous to get that email one day from you kind of connecting us with the MCA. Um, and then additionally, kind of moving forward from there, um, CIS helped with different coordinations um, of meetings, different coordinations of kind of just like planning, um, some really good summary emails uh, from those planning meetings, um, whether that be uh, via email or via Zoom. And then also um, creating, I know there's a correct word for this form, but the, the form for the field trip, the collaborative field trip, um, bringing that together, you know, that documentation is really important. So that I think that was another huge aspect of what CIS did for this collaboration. I thought it was great. I had a really good time doing it. And I thought it was like a really fruitful challenge to think about um, our museum, our collection, the exhibit, and kind of like our activity as a starting point. And I, yeah, I thought it was like a really great way to like expand my thinking and the way that I think about guided visits, field trips, what students take away in the museum and to see it like really taken shape in another institution. You know, I'm hoping that down the road, other organizations see that by pulling resources together, it's really gonna like, positively affect the students. And I think one example of that is the MCA, if I remember her correctly, had money for transportation for, for the students. And transportation for field trips, that's the biggest yeah. um, kind of thing that we run into, biggest barrier. So yeah. not only were the students able to um, go to both spaces, but they had the free transportation and you know, and it unlocked something that wasn't there before. And again, pulling the resources together, making those connections, just, just add invaluable education to students um, in the city. So I think, you know, lots of really great praise to CIS, lots of really great praise to MCA and all the work that they did. It was a lot of fun doing the collaboration and I hope folks that, you know, are listening and reviewing this can really use it as a push to start their own collaborations with other organizations throughout the yeah. CIS partners.
So to help us increase engagement with CPF educators and students, during our traveling exhibition of the Green Book, we collaborated with the CIS of Chicago partner organization, the Pulitzer Center, on a package that included visiting the exhibition on a field trip. And then the Pulitzer Center would book a speaker or a journalist um, from their organization to speak about sundown towns in the US. Kind of going back to the mission, like what was the best way that we could offer, you know, the biggest bang for the buck, right? You know, like make this the most educational experience and for the students and educators. So Karen thought about different organizations from, you know, that work with CIS of Chicago and in schools. And so Karen set up the meeting between me and the Pulitzer Center staff, and we helped keep track of all the CPS schools that came. And then we would communicate that with the Pulitzer Center. I think how we complemented each other, the two organizations, like the speakers from the Pulitzer Center, you know, really helped the topic of the exhibition, the Green Book, and how students were able to have two amazing opportunities to learn about hard history in the US and how we can work together to be resilient toward hatred. Well, I learned all the wonderful resources that the Pulitzer Center offers CPS students and educators and the many organ organizations that CIS of Chicago works with and that align with the mission of the museum. So I think, you know, this is something that we should continue to seek out and look for partnership organizations that can offer free resources that enhance what students are taught either at our museum or at your organization to make a larger impact on the students' understanding of the subject. <laughs>